This podcast is brought to you by WTOE Radio at TwoOurEyes.org. Uh-oh, guess what day it is. Guess what day it is. Huh? Anybody? Julie, hey, guess what day it is. Oh, come on, I know you can hear me. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? <laughs> Leslie, guess what today is. It's hump day. Woo-hoo! Cheryl Echeverry of Echeverry and Travel, your one-on-one travel agent, making your travel dreams come true, home of the independent traveler. Whether you're sighted, blind, or disabled, whether you use a cane, guide dog, or sighted guide, Echeverry and Travel will get you there safely. Come and learn more about traveling independently. Come with me, let's go. Come with me, let's go. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Yes, we're live. It's the Echeverria Travel Show, and I'm your host, Cheryl Echeverria. Um, Been away for a couple of months. Our last live show was in May, and then uh, Lenny took a vacation. And then I was away at the 74th National Convention of the National Federation of the Blind. And now I'm back live with you. I'm so happy. Um, I just want to let you know we are also streaming, or you could go on to the nfblive.org, a brand new uh, program run by the NFB. It's a uh, live chat talk room. And the NFB Travel and Tourism Division has a room there, and you could come in here on the first Wednesday of the month and listen to me and chat with me by test, uh, text chatting, and I could talk to you and talk to my guests at the same time. So come on in and listen up. If you're listening out there other than within the NFB, we are a live radio talk show, so that means we want to hear from you. And the call-in number is one. 1- 888-572-0141. And if you're listening to us for the first time, again, my name is Cheryl Echeverria. I'm the president of the National Federation of the Blinds Travel and Tourism Division. And, um, excuse me, uh, and I also own Echeverria Travel, which I'm very proud to say that uh, I've been honored by uh, two years ago by Governor Andrew Cuomo as Disabled Entrepreneur of the Year. And I service everybody, but I especially service the blind community because there's not too many travel professionals out there that know or know the right questions to ask when when servicing a client that is blind or have other disabilities as well. Also, this show is run on the WTOE network that is produced by the Northeast chapter of the NFB in New Jersey. And where we run on donations by you. So if you like what you hear and all of our other shows throughout the month on Wednesday night from 8 p.m. on, you can send a check to the Northeast chapter of the NFB of New Jersey. And that's 254 Spruce, S-P-R-U-C-E Street, Bloomfield, New Jersey, 07003, and put in the member for throughoureyes.org. Anyway, tonight we have a full pack show tonight. Uh, we have Patrick Keyes, who is the administrator, uh, coordinator, administrator. I'm sure I am saying that wrong, so we'll get it correct. Uh, from the Statler Center up in Buffalo, New York. So after our uh, two-minute break. We'll bring Patrick on. We'll be discussing the Statler Center and their hospitality program. We'll also be talking about what uh, I've been doing since I spoke to you last in May from the convention to uh, plans that are going around on with us and what we've been up to and what we have going on for you. So stay tuned. We're going to take our two-minute break and come right back and bring up Patrick Keys. Talk to you soon. Don't go anywhere. There will be more show right after these messages. Come with me, let's go. And we're back. 
I was just listening to Dr. Maurer's commercial on there, and I'm sure all of you know that we have a brand new president with the National Federation of the Blind. I just want to welcome Mark Riccobono, who is our new president, and if he's listening, um, welcome, sir. We can't wait to start working with you. Anyway, tonight, as I said, I have a great guest on. His name is Mr. Patrick Keyes, and he's from the Statler Center up in Buffalo. Patrick, are you there? Yes, I am, Cheryl. Welcome. I'm so glad you can make it on tonight. Thanks for having me. I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you and, and everybody else. Not a problem. What I usually do is is the first couple of minutes to get everybody kind of situated of who the person is. I like you to just give like a two two minute bio of yourself, like who is Patrick Keys, how long you've been working at the Statler Center, and what exactly you do there. Sure. Um, well, uh, uh, the, I'm here with the National Statler Center up in Buffalo, New York. I'm a Buffalo uh, native. Have lived here pretty much all my life. Um, and have been in the tour and travel and hospitality industry for, gosh, the better part of 23 years now, um, and uh, have been around the Statler Center since its inception in 1999. Um, one of the things that we do is we have people in the industry talk to the, the students every Friday during the time that we are in session. Um, and I had presented to the students uh, virtually every year um, from the variety of jobs that I've had in the industry to explain about what I was doing and what the opportunities are for people that are blind and visually impaired and, and what and with other disabilities uh, to work in these similar positions and to get into this industry. Um, and so I have been actually working at the Statler Center now for going on two years um, as the admissions coordinator and recruiter. So my job is to work with commissions for the blind across the country and even outside of the United States uh, to you know, get students to, to join us in the program, to gain the skills that they can use to find employment in really a very broad and hugely impactful industry, which is hospitality in the broadest sense of the term. Exactly. And uh, as we both know, the hospitality industry is a trillion dollar industry. I mean, not, it's not a million, it's, it's trillion. Multi-trillion. Yes. And the, the thing is, is that people just think, oh, hospitality travel agents. But why don't you go into a little bit about the course and, and what somebody would find out about the courses there, what type of work they could go into with, with the hospitality uh, program up there? Sure. Um, what With our hospitality program, which was what the program was, was uh, founded on and started around, um, the idea is we offer, it's a 10-week training program, uh, which, which for the shortness of that time, it's very jam-packed with information because it is a Monday through Friday full-day program each day that you're with us. Um, the idea is to focus on the concept of customer service um, and then to use that basis to apply it to pretty much anything that the, that the person is hoping to get into within hospitality, which can mean anything from working in travel directly to being in hotels and attractions and entertainment venues and, and then going beyond that into retail and, and all the different things where you're able to work with people and, and offer service to people um, that meets your interests. And so what we do is we focus on building a lot of skill having to do with technology um, and, and being able to work with adaptive technology to offer the best access to mainstream commercial software, things like that. Um, we do a lot in terms of verbal and written communication to really be able to make that first contact to a potential employer and to be very effective at it and to continue to really make yourself the best possible presenter that you can be of yourself um, and to work with all the different things that, that go into uh, the, the kind of confidence that you need to, to seek out jobs, to work with our placement staff. We offer a lot of placement support to our graduates. Um, we offer a lot of individual attention to our students because of the fact that we limit the class sizes that we have. Um, we only allow 15 people in the program at a time. We feel that it's very important that there is a personal attention given to every student as much as possible so that we can identify what the, each person's goals are and then work towards them as much as we can. Um, hospitality, as you, as you said, it, it's a very broad thing. We have people that are working for virtually every major hotel chain in the country. We have people that are working for travel agents and travel agencies. We have people that are working uh, for, for, for example, for uh, car companies and for uh, amusement parks and for 
um, just about anything that you can think of that it, that touches into hospitality in the biggest sense of the word. Great. Uh, before we go on, I just want to remind people who have just turned on the show, and we do have a couple of people in the NFB Live talk room, is that if you want to type something in the chat box here, you can do so, and I'll read the question to Patrick. Or if you're listening on the air, the call-in number is one 888 and this is the Echeverria Travel Show Live. This is not a recorded show. We're a live talk radio, and we're being streamed to Facebook and YouTube and and Ustream. So call us in and talk to us. I'm speaking with Patrick Keyes from the Statler Center in Buffalo. And um, just want to let people know that we have four shows through the month uh, starting at 8 o'clock p.m. And following me next week, is on the bright side with J.D. Degenshine and Jerry Marino, and they talk about everything up in poetry and songs and laughter. And once you start hearing Janie laugh and Jerry laugh, you can't control yourself. Anyway, back to back to our topic here. Um, now, uh, how long is the program from start to finish? Uh, how many weeks are we talking about? Somebody coming. There's a uh, a program going on starting in the fall. What yes, length of time is that? It's it's a ten week program. It start the the next one that, that we that we're going to operate begins on September 10th. Um, and it's actually going to be held in Albany, New York. Um, one of the things that that we're trying to do with the Statler Center because it is a nationwide program. We've had students out from 35 states um, and three countries outside the U.S. even. So we're hoping to be able to reach into more geographic regions and be there on the ground to make it easier for people to come to us and gain the training. But it, it's a 10-week program from start to finish. Um, but again, it's Monday to Friday, 9 to 4 every day. So it's, you, you're, it's almost like you have a job for the 10 weeks that you're with us in terms of being there and going over all the different training and all the different educational elements, uh, the, the presentations, the technology classes, etc. But the idea is 10 weeks um, is a lot easier to to handle than say being in a two year community college program or something like that, where we can focus very hard on the idea of vocational training and and of establishing the goals of of the student. Again, that's one of the things that we really try to emphasize is that we're not a cookie cutter program. It's not something where for a long time people that that knew of us would say, oh, that's that hotel operator school up in Buffalo. Well, that's that's not at all the case. Um, it's what it is. It's a chance for people to explore their goals and dreams of being in the idea of working in the 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 area of customer service as it relates to hospitality and and it can be anything again from you know from travel agents and hotels to theaters and and uh you know uh, musical companies and what have you um all over the place and and it's really a chance to to kind of immerse yourself in that mindset of this is what I want to do how can I get the support from a program like ours for me to meet my goals and dreams Right, and I I actually have a very good friend who uh, is a graduate, and you may know him. His name is Mr. Ron Jamat, and I met him about a year ago. Uh, he is a distant relative of my step uh, my stepdaughter's husband, believe it or not, from Barbados. The company the family goes all the way back to Barbados for a couple of hundred years, and. Um, he, when I met met him, he said, oh, he went to the Statler Center, and I actually met him face-to-face, -face, uh, not this past year at convention, but in 2013 he came. He's in the Albany area, and he actually owns his own franchise through Cruise Planners, which is one of the big uh, names out there. Somebody's looking to become a travel professional uh, it, it's not similar to what I do. I, I sell everything and I'm my own, you know, I, I'm not a franchise. I'm Echeveria Travel. I'm on my own personal agency and I really don't, uh, you know, under an umbrella of anybody. Uh, Cruise Planners is a worldwide uh, franchisee and he could sell whatever he wants. But these are options that, you know, we have once you graduate from the Statler Center. Um, I'd like to, for you to go through what, uh, what an average student would go through during like 
one day of school? What kind of, what's they start a class? What What is the average day like at the Statler Center? Well, it's uh, again, it's it's a, a, a seems like a fairly long day on paper in terms of you you get in the class begins at nine o'clock um, and goes to four p.m. every day. But there are breaks every hour, so it's fifty minutes of instruction and ten minutes of break, uh, and then there's an hour and ten minute break in the middle of the day, and it it varies from, from as as the the course goes on. So in the beginning, there's a lot of fundamental elements that we talk about, uh, you know, concepts of hospitality and understanding what it means. To, to be in this field and what it means to to offer service to people in this field and how to work with people um, how to how to, to to speak with people properly um, and how to respect someone as a client and a customer and a guest um, and do things like that and it continues to to vary over the course of the 10 weeks so that we get into a lot of technology training there's there's some very proprietary software for example um, we we do a lot to focus on the idea of the uh, the opera uh, property management system which is a very prevalent and popular uh, hotel property management system used in the, the great majority of hotels in the United States what that does is it explains how databases work to operate a property like that but it's a very easily transferable skill because frankly once you learn how to use one database you've learned how to use most all databases it's just a matter of how they're defined and how fields are created and established things like that so those though that's a transferable skill that is that is developed um, in terms of going through other commercial software and again doing it in a way so that for example we like we like to to do uh, our AT training using JAWS um, because it tends to be the thing that is most compatible with the most commercial software a lot of people that come in with window eyes and NVDA and what have you that's great and and we we certainly don't neglect the fact that those are popular but we also try to, to emphasize the things that we feel give people the best opportunity to develop and to get employed, which is really our primary goal with every person is let's see what we can do to find you the right opportunity. So uh, a typical day is just going to be a variety of, of classes and a lot of interaction. Again, with the fact that it's a small class size, there is a lot of interaction, one-on-one -on -one discussion um, when you have an instructor and as many as three or four job coaches in the room at any one time, the ratio of students to staff is maybe three to one um, at most. And so there is the ability for people to constantly be interacting with the instructive staff. Um, to be finding out whatever it may be talking about, whether it's a, per, a particular com computer program, whether it is um, a, something having to do with the hospitality industry specifically, or about some broader concept, whether it gets into uh, the communications element that we train, whether it gets into resume writing that we really focus on in terms of, again, putting forth that, that best possible face into a, a prospective employer. Um, and then another important element of it is uh, real world experience. We have in the hospitality program uh, what we call our externship period where the students that are in the classroom actually go out into the community where we are to have an opportunity to be exposed to an operation similar to what they're hoping to do when they graduate and they get to learn from top to bottom all the different elements of these businesses so that you find out what you might want to do, what you might not want to do, because you definitely don't want to go into a situation where you're going to be miserable when you go into work every day. I've, I've had that experience, and it's, it's not good. Um, so we want to give people the exposure um, to as much as we possibly can in a, a pretty jam-packed 10-week period, but it's done in a way so that, there, for example, there's not a lot of homework, there's not a lot of, of testing and what have you. It's really just the idea of giving people the, the kind of hands-on and practical experience so that you're gaining useful knowledge and practical knowledge as opposed to having to memorize a lot of stuff and, and having book tests and, and so on and so forth. This isn't school the way that you would normally think of it. It's really geared towards your experience and customizing it to help create your success. Exactly. And when people come to me and want to find out about, oh, I want to be a travel agent, what do you have to do to become a travel agent? I said, it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of studying, meaning not book studying, but studying up on the different tourism boards or the cruise line you want to sell or Disney or, or a worldwide or, or a destination over in Europe. It's, it's, uh, it's knowing where to look for it, how, how to learn it. And also, you also have to get out there and do it because th this business is great for somebody to work at home or work outside the home. But 
especially in in my business, you have to get out there and travel and see the world. So we can explain it to our uh, to my clients of what is out there for them. And and you touched on a number of things too. Every you know, people say, "Oh, I'm a great people person. I love talking to people." But uh, you 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 mentioned on uh, you know respectfully how to talk to people and everything, how to talk to your clients. Like I always have, like like the old saying is, you have to talk even though you're on the phone with a smile on your face because if your client calls you up. And you're, oh, hi, how are you? They, they're going to hang up and not even want to bother with you. So I'm, I'm sure you go into maybe role play or to make sure you keep up and positive and, and all that, correct? Correct. It's, it's vitally important. It, it, it's honestly, it's funny because every student, when, when we're done with the program and we get evaluations, and one of the things that is almost universal is they talk about the one thing that, that, that really kind of stands out in everything is the fact that we really try to emphasize the idea of each person building their confidence and building that ability to do what you said, which is to smile with your voice and to have that conviction in what you're trying to say to a person, regardless of how you're applying it. Um, it's like I, I, I was just speaking to somebody today at a job fair that I was at here in Buffalo um, about a graduate of ours who okay. his goal in life, honestly, believe it or not, was he wanted to work in a bowling alley of all things. And and he wanted to figure out how he could do that and, and have a, and a more important role than just being working at the counter and what have you. And so we kind of worked with him on the idea of, again, that's hospitality too. People are coming in there to have a good time. And the last thing they need is somebody to be standing there that's all grumpy and, and complaining and what have you. And he is he actually is now the assistant manager of a facility uh, just outside of the city of Buffalo here. Um, and one of the things that, that really allowed him to get that promotion within a month of his initial hiring was the fact that he has such a great attitude, um, regardless of the fact that he has a, a fairly significant disability in addition to vision. Um, he just feels as though he, he can bring some light into people's day um, and loves the chance of, of doing that. And he gained a lot of that from learning how to project that image that he sort of had but didn't quite understand how to really relate it to the public. Um, so again, yes, we do a lot of uh, practice interviews and 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 a lot of role play and what have you to get people to understand that you you sell a, you you attract a lot more flies with honey than you do with vinegar, as the old saying goes. Um, and it's important that you have that kind of positive attitude. Right, Lenny, will you try to tell me something? Thank you. All right. Um, so. Um, I just lost my train of thought there. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Anyway, um, I want to touch, start talking about this, and then I'm sure we're going to have to go to the break in a little while. But um, when it comes to somebody finishing the program and they're looking for a job, what what kind of turnaround do you have? And uh, you know, can you mention any names that that you currently work with, or where people are finding jobs? And is it only in Buffalo or are you finding jobs for people across the country? What, what is the uh, placement program like? Well, the, the placement program, uh, it's definitely working because 82% of our graduates are, are working or have found work be out of coming out of the program. So um, when you, especially when you look at, at the, the blind population and they talk about the statistics of the employment rate in the population is somewhere in the mid 20 percentile. Um, and 82% of our graduates, and that's regardless of whether they're blind or with other physical disabilities. We've we've done these studies, and it's actually it works out to a little bit more than that in terms of our blind graduates working. Um, and they come from all over the country, and generally they want to go back home. So our mission, even though we're located here in Buffalo, is to work with the graduates on identifying opportunities and identifying for themselves, saying, okay, these are five companies that I'd like to work for when I go back home to whether it's say Sacramento, California or, or Albuquerque recently. I'm trying to think of some places that people come to us from Detroit area, um, uh, uh, Virginia, um, uh, Ohio, uh, Colorado. All, people are coming from all over the country to this program. We work with them to find the opportunities there. Generally, we're doing it remotely in terms of working with them and working with their state counselors, um, but we are very active in the process. We are doing 
constantly reaching out to uh, employment agencies and to particular employers. It's I can't say that there's any specific employers that are better or worse um, or more productive or not. It's really just a matter of that individual uh, continuing to to seek out and and work to get the jobs that they want. Um, but it it does work and it's an, it's an important part. It's not like we are the placement agency. But we are offering the placement support, and if need be, we do go out on the road to where people may need us uh, to help advocate on the person's behalf, to maybe set up a, a adaptive technology as needed, uh, to do what it takes to, to, again, to create success for the graduates, regardless of where they are. So you work uh, hand in hand also with the different agencies like the Commission for the Blind or UCP or, or Visions. Uh, so if, uh, let's say I'm looking to enter, to go to the Statler Center from New York, I would reach out to my, uh, counselor with the Commission for the Blind and said, Hey, I've heard about the Statler Center. I'd really like to go there. Uh, our counselors would reach out to you and, and, uh, and, yep. uh, get, get the ball rolling, so to speak in that way. Yep. That's what, that's how it happens. It's the, all the magic it's a, is as I usually tell people, it's a three headed monster. It's the, the it's the the person that is interested in the program. It's the counselor and it's us all working in concert to make things happen. And that's both to get into the program and then at the end to work on on the employment side of it, um, so that everybody is working. I mean, there's we basically each graduate at the time of graduation signs a contract saying that they're going to commit X amount of time to finding work. We are going to commit X amount of time, and then we want the counselor to be as involved as possible, also. And we all work together as much as we possibly can with the goal of, all right, let's let's find that success. All right. So uh, when I first met you at convention, I mean, we've had talked before, but the first meeting that we saw each other was was the National Association of Blind Veterans. We were going to do a presentation there. Are you also reaching out to the veterans organizations separate from the um from the um, rehab uh, councils or anything yes. like that? Yes, we are. As a matter of fact, I, I was at a job fair today, a stand down event in the Buffalo area um, for veterans from, uh, uh, had, I met a gentleman from the Korean conflict. I met people from, that have just come back over from overseas uh, recently. Um, and we're doing a lot with disabled vets um, and trying again to, to give short term training uh, that can lead to, to opportunities for employment where a lot of people just are not really prepared to do the traditional route of college or community college or whatever. And a 10-week program where you can gain all this practical information and, and support, um, it's very attractive to somebody that uh, just wants to get a job. Okay. Now, we're going to take a four-minute break, and when we come back, we'll hopefully we'll hear from you and talk to Patrick some more. So stay tuned. We'll be back after this four-minute break. Hi, I'm Keith Zowie, your announcer here at WTOE Radio Network. We're going to take a little bit longer with this break to save our files for podcasts. So don't go anywhere because there'll be more of the Ezra Travel Show in just a bit. Okay. Well, I just want to remind everybody who you are listening to. I am Cheryl Echeverria, your host for the next hour, actually 30 minutes left of the Echeverria Travel Show, right here on the WTOE network on tourrise.org. And uh, we're talking with Mr. Patrick Keyes from the Statler Center up in Buffalo, New York. And to call in and talk to us, we are a live radio talk show. So the number is one 888 Five seven two zero one four one. If you are a member of the new NFBLive.org, we are streaming through the uh, travel and tourism um, room. So come on in and text me and chat with me uh, on the public chat, and I will, you know, uh, bring up questions and get your answers, and uh, we'll get more going on about that. Uh, 
Patrick, are you there? Are you still there with me? I'm still here. Wonderful. Uh, when we were off the air, you were mentioning you're going to Montana. You said you're going out, you're going there on business. Um, and, and you were, we've been mentioning that you're really trying to get the word out, so to say, about the Sat Statler Center, what you do. Um, what kind of uh, responses are you getting and, and what areas across the country are you going to? Well, we're actually, we're reaching out to pretty much every state in the union. Um, we're actually, I, my goal would be to even to get as far as Alaska and Hawaii. Um, but the, the, the point of our program is to, to be national in scope. Again, we've had students now from 34 states. Um, we've had students from three countries outside the U.S. We've had people come from Romania. We've had people from Africa, uh, from, uh, from Nigeria, actually, um, and then from Canada. Um, and but uh, for example, I'm I have am planning to be in uh, Montana next month. I'll be in the Dakotas. Um, I'm supposed to be out in uh, Washington, Oregon, uh, to to recruit and just to develop new relationships there. But we've really had strong support from a lot of far from places. Believe it or not, California has been one of our strongest supporters. Um, we've had a lot of people coming from the Midwest. We've had a lot of folks from Michigan and Minnesota, and and a few people have have come to us recently from Wisconsin. We've had, we're getting people now from Missouri. We're getting people from uh, Virginia and West Virginia and, and Maryland and so forth. So there is, there is a broad reach. And also, I can't forget Louisiana. Our friends at the Louisiana Center for the Blind um, are very strong supporters of our program. They really believe a lot in what we do as kind of that finishing touch to the, what, is, what happens at, at the NFB training schools. Um, in terms of developing that next step of education and, and the, the idea of the vocational element and really concentrating on that. So we, we want to continue to build on the support that we have from our friends and, and grow new friends um, every place that we possibly can. Um, we are being told by a lot of folks that, that help to keep us open, the underwriters and the foundations that, that really support the National Statler Center, um, in terms of you should be reaching out to, to new places. And, and so we're doing that. Um, and we're finding a lot of really strong, positive responses from people wherever we go. Wonderful. And for somebody who has done both the college area and the vocational area, um, I, I have uh, finished, uh, I have an associate degree, but after that I got married and I divorced and I have, you know, a child and everything coming into play a lot of time and not everybody is a university or a college person people there are more and more people that are really into the vocational aspect of going to school so they're out there in the real world working sometimes you don't get that i'm not knocking college like i said i've been on both uh, avenues but going to a vocational program it's not like the old days oh you're going to a vocational program oh my god don't go there there's so many good ones out there, and Statler's one of the best. Um, what I want to start uh, talking about now, Patrick, like I said, was one of the speakers at the NFB Travel and Tourism meeting this year. And uh, as I mentioned earlier in the beginning of the show, I am the president of the NFB Travel and Tourism Division, and I'm going to go a little bit into that meeting. Um, we did have our elections this year. I was reelected, and we have uh, Amy Barron from uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, who's uh, the vice president. Uh, Glenda Farnham from Oklahoma is now the treasurer. Margot Danny's back again as our secretary. She was reelected. And we've got two great uh, uh, board members, uh, Steve Hestellas from uh, Illinois and Jamal Powell and we have John Tabakhorst who is also from Minnesota so we've got a great uh, board uh, we also uh, had uh, two other speakers there we had Kathy Vasquez who is the access manager for New Egypt Cruise Lines and for I've had her on the show in the past and Patrick got to meet her and we'll talk in a few minutes about that as well as uh, Mr. Andrew Garnett who has also been a guest on the Echeverria Travel Show and also a very good friend in the industry. When I say good friend, uh, when you work in this industry, whether it's a travel agent or a hotel operator or the gentleman that manages the bowling alley, we all are very friendly and hand in hand because you know, we, we're there out there to try to make somebody's life better and to enjoy what they're doing, whether it's the client or the person 
that that's working at that place it's it, it's a very fulfilling kind of job and industry to go into um we uh so so patrick it was your first time at national convention was it not yes it was what did you think did you enjoy yourself it, it, I thought it was fantastic, actually. I think the, the best thing about it was just seeing all the different experiences that people have and how they're able to, to try to, to find their niche in the field. I mean, when you look at what NFB does and, and how it reaches so many people, um, and the fact that there was, what, 2,300 people at the conference, I believe? Um, I mean, it's, it's remarkable that, that there are that many people that are that touched by such a strong organization and that everybody is working towards the idea of the same idea of let's make life better for people that are blind and visually impaired. Let's let's do what we can in every element of it. And we're just very proud and, and honored. And, and I'm frankly, I couldn't be happier to be working in an area where we can make a small contribution to that goal um, in terms of offering people training and, and the chance to compete for a regular job, you know, and to, to be able to go out there and gain some independence and some self-confidence and just to feel as though, you know, I, it's not that I'm blind. I just happen to be a person who can't see. That has that really is not what defines me. And it's important that people feel that way. Exactly. And that's what the NFB is all about. It's all about philosophy and how independent you want to be. I mean, we have a new motto now. If you've uh, seen the new logo, uh, it's the National Federation of the Blind. And it's live the life you want. So, you know, whether it's being a mom or being a travel agent or, or just uh, being know that you can get from one place to another or you can communicate or whatever you can do, it's what you want and not what somebody else is going to tell you to do it. And I was just so in awe this year. Dr. Mauer did step down as our national president. He hasn't gone anywhere. He's not ill or anything. He's just passing on the torch to somebody to bring it forward. Many years, I hope, to come to Mark Riccobono. It was a very emotional. I don't think there was one general session that there wasn't a dry eye in the house. Um, so it was a very uh, touching convention this year. And if people are interested to know that we will be celebrating our 75th anniversary, 75 years of the National Federation of the Blind, starting on November 16th, and we will be having a great convention again uh, July, starting in July, July 1st through the 6th at the Rosen Center next year in Orlando, Florida. So I will be mentioning it, and I'm sure Joe Ruffalo, Ruffalo will be mentioning it, and he actually is the third Wednesday of the month at 8 o'clock p.m. from 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock p.m. right here on the WTOE Network. Through Our Eyes with Joe Ruffalo, the original. He started the show almost 10 years ago now. So uh, that's why we have the show here. And Lenny, our station manager, has been here all the way. So thank you, Lenny, for being here. And then on August 27th, I will be a guest on Looking Good Without Looking. And if you're not familiar with that show, people who are listening in, uh, it's hosted by Linda Zaney Thomas and Joanna Bacan. And uh, Linda talks all about fashion. She's sighted, but she's a parent of a blind uh, child with other disabilities. And Joanna is totally blind, and she's the makeup maven. And I will be talking about a number of packing ideas that I had learned. Well, um, well, that was that when I was away. Sometimes when you're a travel agent, these different places send you things to try out and Patrick how, do you know what a compression bag is while traveling I don't know if you use a backpack when you going around or anything but have you heard of some of these new compression bags uh, the only compression uh, device I'm familiar with is the compression sock I'm wearing right now for my broken ankle so no I don't I'm sorry well this this will actually save you a lot of space in your suitcase and what it is, it looks like a big, gigantic Ziploc bag. And the old ones you used to have a vacuum to, like, suck out all the air. This one, and it's called, it's, uh, I forgot the name of it. I uh, forgot the name of the company. But um, I'm going to be going into it more on Linda's show on August 27th. But you put your clothes in, and they call it, come in small, medium, and large bags. And uh, what you do, instead of... 
um, vacuuming it out, you zip up the bag and you kind of roll it up and the, the end of the bag has tiny little holes, not big enough to puncture the, the bag or, or rip the bag, but it compresses everything. So instead of taking two huge suitcases with, uh, with us to convention this year, because my husband and I both go, we got all of our clothes into two separate compression bags and put them into one suitcase. Because if you travel a lot, you know that luggage is a big headache and it's, it's getting very expensive to, to travel because I think the, the first piece of luggage that you check in is like 25 to $30 depending on the airline. So when you could get that kind of clothes into the bag, it, it really came into um, great bit of help. So any of my clients that book with me now, I send them out at least one to try. So if you're a client out there listening, yes, you're going to get one of these in the mail. So I hope the client, uh, the customers that uh, that make this bag will, will hear it. So maybe they could give me more discounts and all that. So Patrick, I will definitely be giving you the name of this so you can look into it. So if, if you, if, if you uh, pack a lot of stuff for your travels, this will save you a lot of time. Or it's also great after uh, when you're away, so you can put all the dirty clothes in and do the same thing, and you don't have to worry about uh, like water or anything else getting into it. So it keeps everything nice and dry as well. So it, it's it, it's funny because I get all this in and we roll it up, and then I lie on top of the bag to get the rest of it out, and then we keep rolling it up. It's a lot of fun doing it. You got to put, you know, it, it it's. Um, you know, you got you got to look at everything with with, with fun and everything. Um, that's why I love listening to Janie and, and Jerry on the bright side. You have to. People may think this is oh, this is a pain in the butt, but it's so fun just putting all the stuff in the bags and getting the air out. Oh goodness. Um, let's see what else. Oh yes, at at did you see Dan Parker at the convention? The guy that drove in on the motorcycle. I did. Dan that Parker, for those of you who don't know who that is, he's a blunt, uh, he's a gentleman that is a motorcycle race car driver, and uh, he was in an accident and he woke up in the hospital totally blind from the head injury. Uh, but hey, that didn't stop him. It didn't stop me. I lost my vision at 35, and um, I'm living the life I want. But uh, this gentleman. Um, picked himself up, dusted himself off, and he was the first gentleman to ride a, mo ride a motorcycle that he uh, manufactured that he could ride on the fl salt flats of Utah. And he actually drove into the general session on his motorcycle. So uh, it, it was just an awesome see a thing to see and hear. Uh, so it, it brought, you know, it, it's an exciting exciting time for us that are blind to see who invents different things, what opportunities are out there, just like Patrick and the Statler Center are bringing to others. Um, I want to get back to the school a little bit here as well. Um, now, we, we were talking about... Um, yeah, do you go into the reservations programs? Because I know in the past, like myself, especially with the airlines, they have a GDS program. Have you, do you guys work with GDS programs? Because I know sometimes they are inaccessible when it comes to working with them. We work, we work with, not with the GDS program, but we do, we actually, we have two specific programs, actually. The hospitality program is our 10-week program, but then we also have uh, what's basically what we call our contact center program, which is a seven-week training, it's even shorter, um, that focuses on the phone delivery of, of service in the industry. Um, and with that, we do we do some other things that sort of lead people into GDS, and we work a lot in, in that's where we, we get into the GDS elements and things like that, in the in the after the class is done in terms of people having specific needs and that's one of the things that i think is also important to mention about what we do at the statler center which is that once you walk in the door for the first time you never leave you 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 are out of the classroom after seven or ten weeks but we never leave you 
Um, and so if you call and say, okay, hey, I'm looking to get into a reservation situation and uh, my AT may not be working with that with that uh, particular program, there's no compatibility, we will first of all make sure that you have the skills to use the, the program, but then also we will do what we need to do to, if we have to, to script things for whatever AT people use um, and make sure that you do have that accessibility. Um, it kind of goes back to what you're saying in terms of with Dan Parker, the idea that there are so many opportunities out there, and it shouldn't be that because you are blind that you don't have those opportunities. And it's important that we are always mindful of that in everything that we do. So we actually, we have a lot of people. We have people working for reservations at Disney. Um, we have people working for reservations with cruise lines, with airlines, with rental car companies, with uh, working in ticket offices and theater companies and opera companies and what have you all over the country. So it's, again, it's, it's building up the foundation of the skills and then continuing to follow up and continuing to work with people to show that the opportunities are out there and don't limit yourself just because, oh, I'm, I, I can't see and so I can't do this. That, that shouldn't be the consideration. It should be what can we do to make this accessible for you, to make you have this opportunity, to allow you to have this opportunity. Um, so, yeah, we do, we do what we need to with that, and we find that it works very well. Great. I, I did want to bring up a couple of things that uh, Echeveria Travel is doing to our listeners out there. Uh, some of you may know or may not know, I am a guide dog user as well as a cane user as well as a sighted guide no matter where I'm going and how I'm getting around, is that I'm doing a cruise to benefit the Guide Dog Foundation for the Blind, and it's also the School for America Vet Dogs. Uh, it is uh, a cruise from New York City to Bermuda. It's a seven-day cruise on the beautiful Norwegian Breakaway, brand new ship, one of the brand new ships from Norwegian Cruise Line. The sister ship, the Getaway, just came out in February, and she's down in Florida. Uh, but we, it will be a minimum of fifty dollars per stateroom for all. Uh, People that do book, we need a minimum of 16 staterooms to start getting that fundraiser money to the Guide Dogs Foundation. So that's available. And we're also starting to plan our second annual couples getaway. The first one is actually coming up next week. Nelson and I and a couple of couples are going to Sandals in Ocho Rios, the Grand Riviera. So we're looking for ideas uh, for you, our clients out there listening or soon to be clients of where you'd like to go next year, just couples, no kitties, no nothing, just the couples getting away and enjoying somewhere in paradise or Europe or Africa, or, well, maybe not Africa right now, but, you know, anywhere in the world that our heart takes us. So if you want to reach out to me, uh, my email is reservations at E-C-H-E-V-A-R-R-I-A travel.com. And my phone number is 631-456-5394. And we work from uh, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., Monday through Friday, 9 to 1 on Saturdays. Sundays we're closed and when, at holidays and when we're traveling. Or just contact me and we can arrange around your schedule because without you guys, I'm not in business. I'm not here talking to you on the radio about travel and all that. Um, then um, in September, I'm heading down to the national office in in Baltimore. Uh, since I'm a division president, I'm going down there for our leaders and ledgers seminar. And then um, in October, we may be going back to Jamaica again for a a uh, FAM. That's a travel agent uh training course or if you've done like uh i've a uh, specialist with the jamaican tourism board every year they have a fam and they bring travel agents to jamaica and show you different areas of jamaica and resorts and all that and then in november we have the new york state nfb convention which i will be at as well and if other things come up I'll, I'll announce them on my Facebook page, on LinkedIn, and, of course, here on the WTOE network. Um, we're coming to the end of the show. Patrick, I'd like to thank you so much for being a guest, and I hope maybe you'll come back in the future. Maybe we could even speak to one of your students if they would be interested to talk about the program there and give a, you know, an, a personal eye view of being a student at the Statler Center. Um, 
Lenny, uh, as many of you know, Lenny became a grandpa, so congratulations again. Lenny, how old is the baby now? Oh, yeah, uh, the baby is now two months. And Patrick, can you give our listeners your information should they want to reach out to you? Certainly. Um, they can, well, they can find us online at uh, statlercenteralloneword.org. Um, and my uh, email is pkeyes at statlercenter.org. Um, and my phone number directly is 716-888-4526. Um, but it's easy to find us on the web. Uh, we're more than willing to work with folks. Uh, we have openings for all of our classes all the time. We actually still even have a couple of seats uh, because of some uh, some issues with, with some support uh, situations uh, for the class that starts in September and October. So, and it's never too late to get people in. So we would love the opportunity. And Cheryl, thank you so much for the chance to, to be on with you tonight. We'll definitely be having you back on. And I want to let you know, especially those who would be interested in joining the Travel and Tourism Division, we will be using the NFB Live for monthly meetings as well. Uh, those will be starting up at the end of September. We're looking to do uh, a benefit for 2016 to bring in money for the Travel and Tourism Division and also some um, ideas to do maybe a, a tour either before or after the National Convention. And any other ideas you want to bring to the table to uh, talk about fundraising for uh, travel and tourism because, as you know, uh, we're a nonprofit organization and we run on donations. So, to keep doing what uh, we're doing in the NFB, whether it's the National Federation of the Blind as a whole or the WTOE network, which is run on donations sent to the Northeast chapter of the NFB in New Jersey, we can't do it without you, the listeners and the clients and the members. So I want to say thank you and God bless. And we'll see you back here, same bad time, same bad channel in September. Enjoy the rest of your summer. Be well. Have a great night. Bye-bye. The Echeverra Travel Show is brought to you by Echeverra Travel, home of the independent traveler since 2009, specializing in worldwide destinations for the blind community. For more information on Echeverra Travel, call Cheryl at 631-456-5394 or email her at reservations at echeverratravel.com. All words, ideas, and contents expressed on this show are those of Cheryl Echeverra and not necessarily those of the National Federation of the Blind, the Northeast New Jersey Chapter, or the WTOE Internet Radio Network. Until next time, I'm Keith Zally. Let's go, let's go. Cruise like a Norwegian. The previous WTOE Radio podcast is a commercial-free version of our live broadcast brought to you every Wednesday evening starting at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at through thruourouseyes.org.